Hello, good evening and welcome to the primetime news on Join News with me, Matilda Nyakwa Dennis. Ahead in the bulletin, Ghana Standards Authority defends its test, which suggested the expert alum used at the Wager Waterworks was still potent and did not pose a risk to the lives of millions of Ghanaians. More support continues to pour in for the resolution of Ghana's energy crisis as Japan approves a grant of $16 million for that purpose. Ghana likely to face imminent food crisis if investments in the agricultural sector are not improved. And on the international front, Pope Francis I has celebrated his first mass since becoming leader of the global Roman Catholic faith. All these and more coming up shortly. Please stay. Now, news just in, coming in indicates that another rainstorm has hit parts of the northern region and one person has been unfortunately confirmed dead. Mohammed Hashmin is on the line to give us details. Hello, Mohammed. Yeah, hello, Matilda. Mohammed, good evening. Good evening, Matilda. Matilda. Now, tell me, what is the situation at the moment? Well, the situation at the moment is just that, is just that the rain has up at the moment but a lot of hundreds of people in our three communities have been rendered homeless as a result of the rainstorm the rainstorm started somewhere around uh, around 5 to 6 p.m this evening and one person one manam manam bala who was returning from work was hit with a container the rainstorm raised the container and then it hit the man and then unfortunately he passed away. Mm. I, I am right here with the Yanshigu uh, Gumane Assembly man and I will be talking to him for us to appreciate the sense of damage that has been oh, okay. That okay. done here. Please put him on. In this, okay. in this community. Well, okay. good evening. Thank you very much for your time. You are live on Joy, on Joy News. Okay. Well, what can you tell us about this rainstorm that has just hit this community? Yes, in fact, it's very sad. As an assembly man, when I came over this evening, somewhere 5, 30, 35, there about, I came and met about several houses which they were packing their things out from their rooms, which I felt very sad. So I quickly asked them probably we open one of my classrooms in the community. So that those who not have places to sleep tonight will move there tomorrow. We'll see what is going to happen. As I'm talking in the Nyanshagu, about, about 40, 45 houses, which is affected in the Nyanshagu, Nyanshagu North community. Okay. Have you been in touch with NADMO officials in the metropolis? Yes. I called my, the NADMO coordinator who is in charge of the Nyanshagu, which actually he was currently at somewhere which he said he will get in touch with me in an hour time. Yet he is here to call me. I'm still expecting his call so that I will see what is going to happen in due course. So till he comes, you are saying that you open the Our Lady Junior High School for the affected victims to, to sleep there? Yes. As of now, I am saying I will open the Junior High School for those who are affected to put their heads and then we'll see what is going to happen tomorrow morning with the NADMO and then my coordinating directors in my Sanargo district assembly and the Tamil Metro assembly and we'll see what uh, assistance will be given to them. As I'm talking, my name is Honorable Mohammed Awal Zakaria Nyanshogu Gumani. So Matilda, that is the extent of damage that has been caught here in Nyanshigu Gumale electoral area. Electricity mm. supply in this area, as I'm standing, is, is, has been cut off simply because some of the electrical poles have also been affected. On my way to the community, I could count about seven containers that were raised down and then blocking uh, um, some uh, access routes to the community here. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mohammed. We'll get back to you for some updates. We heard my correspondent, who is also the Northern Regional Correspondent, Mohammed Hashmin, telling us about the unfortunate happening just a few hours ago. Now, moving on, work is yet to be completed on dormitories at the Kumasi Girls Senior High School that had their roofs ripped off during a rainstorm about a fortnight ago. Affected students still occupy two classrooms that converted into temporal shelters for them by school officials. 
authorities. The school's assembly hall has been converted into, cl into a classroom for some 53rd year students whose classrooms have been converted into dormitories. But the students are complaining about poor ventilation at the assembly hall, which they say affects their studies. Now, in other news, the Supreme Court has dismissed the joint application brought by 327, 327 supporters of the governing National Democratic Congress, the NDC, in the ongoing presidential election petition. The court ruled that the applicants were not needed in the case. The ruling followed preliminary arguments in court Thursday morning in which a lawyer for the applicants, Komala Senanu, asserted his clients were citizens and interested parties in the case. The applicants came from some 11,000 polling stations where the petitioners Nana Ikufuadu. Dr. Mamudu Baumia and Jacob Echebi Lamte are alleging the widespread irregularities were recorded in the 2012 general elections. But lawyers for the petitioners argued the over 300 joint applicants only wanted to delay the hearing of the case with challenging the declaration of President Mahama as winner of the 2012 presidential election. Lead lawyer Philip Addison argued the court will open the floodgates for needless joint applications if it granted that of the applicants. He said it would amount to making a mockery of the judicial process if the court allowed the applicants to join. The judges of the Supreme Court agreed with the argument of the petitioner and dismissed the application. The Japanese, the Japanese cabinet has approved a $16 million grant for Ghana to enable it deal with its current energy crisis. The Japanese government has also promised further assistance to deal with the challenges in the areas of health and agriculture. President of the Japan International Cooperation Agency, Dr. Akihiko Tanaka, told President Mahama during a meeting at a Flagstaff House on Thursday that Japan is still concerned about Ghana's development. President Mahama said the grant approval is timely, considering the current power crisis Ghana is experiencing. He told the delegation his government will continue to count on Japan's assistance to fast-track Ghana's development. As our economy grows at the rate at which it's growing, average of 8% per year, the demand for power is growing and as the incomes and the welfare of our people continues to improve, their demand for energy continues to increase. And so as I said right now, we're going through uh, a power management you know, uh, situation where we're having to shed load and so people are seeing outages and I just came out of a meeting where we've been brainstorming on how to resolve it as quickly as possible. So. This news you brought is good news. The president of the Japan International Cooperation Agency, Dr. Akihiko Tanaka, told Joy News about some processes Ghana will have to follow to finally receive the money. And after the cabinet decision, um, we need to uh, sign um, uh, agreements between the two governments. And, and that will take place probably in April or May. Well, it depends upon the agreement, uh, but hopefully we would like to uh, start actual disbursement uh, sometime in the uh, end of this year. Uh, development of infrastructure is uh, one of the areas we attach importance to our activities in Ghana. Uh, we understand uh, improvement of energy sector uh, is, as the President said, is very important uh, for this country. In an interesting development, the communications director of the Ghana Standards Authority, Kofi Amponsa Bediako, has defended the authority's stamp of approval for the use of aluminium sulfates, which was said to have expired. Now, according to him, even though the aluminium sulfate had an expiry date of 2012, it could not have lost its potency within a year, since it is an organic chemical which usually loses its potency after about five years. 
Four officials of the Ghana Water Company and the Ghana Urban Water Company have been interdicted since investigations into the expired alum revealed that 0.7% of the total 12,000 metric tons had been used to treat water at the wager treatment plant. Meanwhile, the Ghana Standards Authority, which conducted analytical tests and declared the sample potent, has been criticized as lacking the capacity to carry out the test. But head of public relations, Kofi Ampo, says the fact that the authority declared the expired substance potent and harmless does not mean it shared its responsibility of safeguarding the health of Ghanaians. He however noted it was strange that a substance which usually expired after five years had its expiration date within a year and blamed the development on the packaging. We did the test and uh, we said that the level of um, potency was so high, which meant that it wasn't harmful. Any chemist or expert in chemistry in the area of water will confirm that inorganic substances like aluminum sulfate uh, does not cause harm to human beings uh, if they consume. And, and that is what many people are finding difficult to understand. Uh, the problem is that it got expired. How did it become expired? Probably they didn't clear it early. Now that's a different issue. It can be dealt with. So, what harm can expired aluminium sulfate cause when its end product is consumed by human beings? In the case of chemicals, normally when they are manufactured, they last for four or five years. In the case of this one, what they are saying is that it was manufactured a year ago or some time back, and within a year it was supposed to expire, which is strange. Chemicals don't perform that way. Very strange. And some of us and other members in this organization are beginning to wonder whether the expiry they put on it is really the correct one. Unless it is not chemical. But if it is a chemical like aluminum sulfate, you cannot manufacture it and expect it to expire within a year. But could anything have been done differently to spare the public the risk of being poisoned? The Ghana Water Company will need to plan well, especially its procurement processes. It must bring in quantities of aluminum sulfate that it can use over a period of time. If you want to bring in a quantity which, you can, which expires in five years, and you are sure that within the five years, every item on, within the quantity can be utilized, bring them in. But don't bring excessive quantities when you know that you cannot use them. That brings in problems. Problems of expiry, problems of uh, uh, believability that it will not harm people, even though we know that in the case of chemicals it's different. Kofi Amponsa Bediako advised the Ghana Water Company to dispose of the chemicals to allay fears. Now, in a bid to raise capital for its operations, the National Identification Authority is charging $120 to register foreign nationals who permanently reside in the country. This, the authority hopes, will help it raise at least part of the 50 million Ghana cities it needs for its operations. Even though the NIA law makes registration of foreign nationals permanently residing in the country compulsory, it is silent on whether they have to pay to be registered. The National Identification Authority Act 750 authorizes the collection of personal and biometric data of not only Ghanaians but foreign nationals living in the country. We've already started registering uh, the foreigners. We started in February. Um, we, we, we have three locations at the moment. One here in the authority, the other one in Kalbank, uh, the head office, and then also at the International Conference Center. So it's a project that has started. And it's a project that has been um, that uh, has resulted from the initiative of NIA and a, and a private um, uh, entity. So it's a public-private partnership project. The registration of foreign nationals is exclusive to those permanently residing and working in Ghana. But foreign nationals who frequent the country regularly but are not residents can choose to apply for the card. Executive Secretary of the Authority, Dr. William Ahiazi, says. 
Even though the registration of foreign nationals has started, the authority will soon embark on an intensive educational campaign to get foreign residents in the country to get registered. He also explained the rationale behind the registration of foreign nationals when sections of Ghanaians are yet to be registered. This is, this is a paying service. One of our, our challenges has been uh, the volume of resources that we require for our operations, other operations, cut distribution, enrollment, uh, the, the establishment of the national identification system itself, which involves deployment of infrastructure for identity authentication uh, in real time, and also decentralizing our operations into the regions and into the district. So all of those uh, activities require a lot of money. Uh, and if we had the money from government, we would not uh, worry very much. Those who, who, who passed the uh, Establishment Act thought about this, and so they provided uh, space in the law that allows us to go out there and, and raise revenue by ourselves. So we're just using a provision in our Enabling Act to raise some revenue. And with that, we can then discharge some other responsibilities that we are mandated by the law to do. He admitted that the authority is under-resourced and would need massive capital injection to ensure the smooth implementation of its programs. The range of things we require money for is extensive. Uh, but for the basic services and the famous question, when are our cards coming, uh, for card distribution, we are ac actually also exploring different options of partnering others to provide some resources. But government has committed to helping the authority to complete those basic responsibilities this year. Normally, for those ones, we're normally talking about uh, 45, 50 million cities for us to complete the registration and complete cut distribution. But there are several other um, components of the national identification system which, which go way beyond 45 million Ghana cities. Registration of Ghanaians and the distribution of ID cards to them is still ongoing. And Dr. Hiazi says Ghanaians are yet to receive their ID cards and those who have not yet registered can visit the offices of the authority across the country for collection of their IDs or registration. Still in the news, barely a month ago, Joy News brought you a report on the deplorable state of the Ashaiman Valko Flat Road. Residents then said they were fed up with the dust and blocked the road. My colleague Patricia Jose visited the area again, and this time residents say there has been an improvement over the earlier situation, but they are looking forward to a third road. Last month, some residents at Ashaman Night Market blocked the main road to the Ashaman Main Lorry Station, demanding immediate action by the Municipal Assembly on a delayed road construction. The residents claimed the road had remained untarred for four years and they can no longer bear the dust they put up with daily. When we visited the area, Project Director of Enimua Construction Incorporations, Mark Anthony, promised the road will be completed within three days after our visit if the road engineers at the Ashaman Urban Routes allow them to go ahead with the project. It's been over a month, and in keeping with our promise, Joy News visited the place to ascertain the situation. Residents said work on the road has improved. However, they are still waiting for the road to be tarred. For now, there have been some changes, but not the changes that the entire people are expected. For now, for the past three, four days now, the contractor is on the ground working. I could say that we are not okay because, you know, what you see on the ground has been with you for the past three years. What we are expecting to see the work done, then I can assure you that the people in the community will now be very happy that those who are having stores on the road, all of them could now be happy that there are no more dust into their stores and rooms. Until the road is tall, then the people in, in the various community will be very happy. Currently, I think um, something is being done. Last week, um, the contractor made um, the, the supplier come to supply um, the gravels, and they used that one to re-level um, the road which I think they're on their way to do the road. So maybe, let me say, from next week going, what we expect from them shall be done. 
that is what I see. Because day in, day out, every morning, um, the water tank comes to the area to water the road. Meanwhile, Joy News observed that residents are still putting up with the nuisance created by the dust. Vehicles still leave clouds of dust behind them when they move. For the contractor, Frank Anamoa, the residents are to be blamed for the delay. He said most of the residents are not cooperating, adding drivers do not respect road blockades. He went ahead to explain why they were not working at the time of our visit. The, the people, you know, the cooperation is not there. And the people around this, they are only most very hard people have come up across. The trucks, the cars, and also they wouldn't give us time for us to do whatever we wanted. That we try to block the road and uh, they're taking all the blockage. However, he assured the team that by Saturday, the road will be tagged. I can assure you that either tomorrow or by Saturday morning here is a different story altogether. You see a tar road. Trust join news to bring you updates on this developing story. 60 selected nurses from more than 45 health facilities from across the country have undergone an oncology training program to equip them with skills in modern management of breast cancer. The participants are expected to, after their training, educate members of their respective communities, among others, on how to prevent as well as detect cancer through self-examination. Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin has, uh, has more. Now, please, viewers, you are warned that the visuals can be quite disturbing. Breast cancer originates from the breast tissue, often from the inner lining of milk ducts. Although the condition is prevalent among women, with one woman reportedly dying from the condition every 69 seconds, males are also susceptible to breast cancer. Breast cancer can be treated if detected early, but has the ability to spread to other vital parts of a woman's body if undetected. Since Ghana has no specialized oncology nursing school, Breast Care International, BCI Ghana, in collaboration with the National Cancer Coalition, NCC, of the USA and Krebs Alliance of Germany, have organized a three-day oncology training program in the Ashanti region. President of Breast Care International, Dr. Beatrice Biafe Adai, told Joy News ignorance about breast cancer accounts for its spread as about 70% of women report to the hospital when they are in the advanced stages of their condition. Breast cancer and the cancers for that matter are killing a lot of people. The incidence is on the increase the world over and mortality in our part of the world is very high. That means a lot of people are dying from the cancers. According to her, out of the 53 countries in Africa, Ghana is ranked 10th as the country with the most breast cancer cases. Dr. Wiafe Adai does advise women who detect any abnormalities in their breast to contact a physician promptly. Medical director at the Konfanoshi Teaching Hospital, Dr. Bafo Ewa, says when a person is diagnosed of breast cancer, chances of that person living up to five years is bleak. One worrying thing too is, if you read all the 10 books about cancer, the signs and symptoms that they talk about, many a time, the one that you read are the advanced type of cancers. And at that stage, little can be done for the patient. He advised the trainees to become strong advocates in the fight against the condition. Reverend Tammy Denise, a breast cancer survivor of nine years, shared her experience with Joy News. For people that have breast cancer, go to the doctor fast. Don't go to the traditional healers. Go to the doctor so the doctor can help you. If you have breast cancer and you go to the traditional healers, then go to the doctor, then it might be too late. Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin's report for Joy News. We're taking a short break. We'll be back with more insightful news, so please don't go. Thank you very much for staying with Joy News. Now, former Director General of the Ghana Health Service and a council member of the National Health Insurance Authority, Dr. Elia Sori, has recommended nationwide implementation of the NHIS capitation program to help deal with the numerous challenges currently plaguing the scheme. The NHI has consistently been criticized over its indebtedness to its service providers across the country. 
The situation came to a head this week as some missionary health centers refused to attend to patients with NHIS cuts. In spite of the negative publicity the NHIS has endured, a former director of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Elias Sori, thinks it is the best health insurance scheme on the continent. He, however, called for a review of its payment mechanism. Capitation must be added to the form of payment now nationwide. Okay. It is just that we have not explained enough to people to tell people what decapitation really means. Mm -hmm. And because we don't do it well, people are taking it that it is a political move. Mm -hmm. My fellow Ghanaians, without capitation, our fund will get eroded. The risk will be borne by the fund and it will all go. Let the health provider take part of the uh, 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 risk and do things well. He urged NHIS providers to take a second look at their mode of attending to patients. We have to review that and make sure that the diagnosis that we make really correspond to the kind of treatment which might be far cheaper because 80% of the diseases in Ghana can be managed by cheaper way. We don't need to spend a lot of money on that. He advised that the running of the scheme should be devoid of politics. So once we've got a consensus on the concept let us get bipartisan way of managing it. We don't do it to score points. And therefore, all payment mechanisms, a way of getting more money into it should be what we should be looking for, not attacking. Dr. Sori urged the authority to be more clear in its communication on the release of claim payments and should provide periodic updates on the scheme to Ghanaians as well as conduct periodical clinical auditing on claims made by providers. In other news, the youth wing of the Greater Accra Regional NDC has registered its dissatisfaction about the recent action by some group calling for the removal of the Chief Executive of the National Health Insurance Authority, Sil Sylvester Mensa Form Office. The call for Sylvester Mensa's head follows recent unsavory comments about the scheme by the minority and opposition parties to the effect that Sylvester Mensa has made a mess of the health insurance scheme. Chief Executive of the NHIA, Sylvester Mensa, has come under a heated attack from a group calling itself Alliance for Empowerment. Some branch executive of the NDC say he has failed to provide leadership for the implementation of the one-time premium policy and have made a mess of the health insurance scheme. The group has threatened to storm the office of the NHIA to throw out the chief executive if the president hesitates in relieving him of his duties. At a press conference held at the Greater Accra Regional Office, the regional youth organizer, Thomas Ashon, and some youth executives registered their displeasure at the ongoing debate about the NHIA boss. When the youth of Greater Accra are not happy about the development going on about Sly, because this is a man we need to reward rather than to destroy. Just because we are, we are just coming out of election, people who want to serve their parochial interests, who are angry for positions to be at places where they did not toil and suffer for, who try to destroy such a youthful person that the youth of the NDC cherish so much. The executive warned that those calling for the removal of the chief executive from office should stay away from peddling false news. We, the youth of the NDC in Great Accra, want to send a word of caution to those distractors to stay off sly to leave lie alone or they will have the youth of the region to contend with. Those of them who are also trying to use some of the youth activists from the various constituencies to foment trouble or to turn the eye and reputation of SLI should also desist from it because the leadership of the youth wing will not take kindly to any of said things. The group further says anyone who has anything against the chief executive should bring his facts for further debate. Member of Parliament for Kwadasu has warned the country may face severe food crisis if the current decline in the agricultural sector is not readily addressed. He was contributing to the debate on the 2013 budget in Parliament today, which focused on the agricultural sector. The agri sector was allocated 340 million Ghana CDs, representing 2% of the total budgetary allocation. 
but Dr. Owusuefi Akoto, who is a ranking member on Parliament's Food and Agriculture Committee, says the situation is fast deteriorating. We made some gains, but unfortunately we are losing it all. And that is what saddens me and alarms me. Because what is happening is that if you look at the statistics which have been presented in all the budgets for the last five years since I have been in this parliament, it is very clear. It, tell, it, tell, it gives you a pattern which is very, very worrisome. Where in 2008, agriculture grew by 7.6%, then went down slightly to 7.4%, and then slided to 5.3%. And then the following year actually was no growth 2011. They themselves are in the statistics admit that it's only a matter of 0.8%, uh, which is nothing. And then this year, uh, 2012, it's uh, projected to have gone up uh, by 2.6, and they are targeting 4.4. The thing is that if you take account of the population rate our, our population is growing, which is close to 3%, that it means that agricultural growth has been stagnant. And not only that, if you compare it to the, the general growth of the economy, where the economy, as you know, has been growing around 7% the last few years, you see that there's a, a, a widening gap, gap between the growth of the economy and the growth of food and agriculture. However, the Member of Parliament for Myung, Dr. Ahmed Yakubu Al Hassan, dismissed his claims but admits there are challenges with rice production. Contributing to the debate on the floor of the House, he said government recognizes the contribution of the agri sector to the economy and will not do anything to stifle development there. It is crops, forestry and logging, fisheries and livestock. Mr. Speaker, if the, if the policy of government in the last couple of years is to discourage logging and rather concentrate on developing plantations, you do not expect that sector to be growing positively. And if you do not change your, your system of aggregating of agricultural GDP, obviously that will certainly bring the GDP down. Bait on gay and lesbianism will not go away anytime soon. While the issue resurfaced on the floor today during the debate on the 2013 budget, Member of Parliament for Asante Mampong, Francis Adainimo, professed love for the first Deputy Speaker, Ebo Batunodro, after the Speaker overruled a point of order by the MP for Nangtong, Mohamed Mutala. Setting continues tomorrow. Up next is business in a moment. The Equiapim districts of the eastern region may just be the major hub for the cultivation of pineapple. Eto Namse, who recently visited Yaojai, a community in the district, reports pineapple cultivation is the major preoccupation of farmers in the town. But the farmers face several challenges which might ultimately affect future cultivation of the crop. Yaojai is a small community in the Equiapim districts of the eastern region. Residents in this community are predominantly farmers who grow pineapple on a large scale, like this 36-acre farm, which is harvested every 12 months. A problemo, first na ki duya ofumza ne duya ofuma dudu e peni yinya. Njema si si bi duya roba so roba nusu ne wedding. Bondo na kufu ta for four million, four million uni biya na esi uje funiye. Hmm, kwa nusu yen problem ya kwa ya a problemo huni. These men who work daily on this plantation speak about the problems they face in growing healthy crops. Problems in the area, as I say, no, 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 always can or the or no problem in the area. By what we need scan, time is all my chemicals in man. We need farm and data means you know, we have problem baby. We do have baby, let's get to even a bit. So, we do have about 10,000, but later on, exporters in my return, we have about 4,000, not 3,000 people. Thankfully, their efforts do not go waste as a local food manufacturer bails them out. MD2 no buy no, in your exporter company back up on Blue Skies. One water, uh, 
pineapple na blue sky no so no se wan kasa odu kwa won to ji se odu komo bia register ho a wonim no nti ana ne to na edi ga market market me mfa wo to na kran kran boy mi ye blue skies art grower ye bu arebe no ye dua no weekly weekly nti ye weekly program team every week bia no a surprise 5000 week bia ye surprise 5000 any ejuma yeah, yeah. Of course, Blue Skies does not purchase all the produce, so the rest is sold to market women. Ebe pro, ubi antwa ni njina abe sene se waboka. Hmm. Ana sometimes we be bu, e o marketi wo export unu kwenye be bu o marketi wo nte mano kona se kubu a o mama meto ofa mo ubi. Na se wofu na wii njina ni njina se waboka. E o se yenya unu ebe to export e sene ba nu ebe to na fi. Because pineapples have a one-year lifespan, these farmers have to grow other crops such as tomatoes and pepper, which have shorter maturation periods, to survive while they wait for their crop pineapple to be ready for harvest after one year. First, you hear low, I do buy food. Second, they are doing so. I do tama, I don't ready now. We are doing so. You hear tough, Janka Ibi here, say a spot to be, and I say it be a fat to be anybody ever contacted to be a blue sky. And we are we are demanding a year, who knows on our yama. Then I already pay our catching. They are demanding more now between Iron, and we saw marketing of Abatama. Oh, fertilizer, chemicals, and the boarding. And also every empire, chemicals and branding, and fertilizer on time, crying every year. So we did Christmas, we have Christmas in the two batches of fertilizer and beer. We are in two videos about to see no time of booby ope. Now I could not see any problem, Cassie. I know how you are. That's what I'm saying. Join news. Bye bye. In other business news, BMW Group said 2012 was the best year in its history after the German company posted a rise in profits and revenue. The owner of the Mini and Rolls Royce, Make says, saw pre-tax profits rise 5.9% to 7.82 billion euros and revenues up 11.7% to a record of 76.8 billion euros. The car maker said total group sales in 2012 alone were 1.84 million vehicles, an increase of of 10.6% on 2011. Now up next is market data and smart investments. It's now time for the very latest in the world of sports. My name is George Ada Jr. Surely be coming to you with all the stories right after this. Sports is uh, tonight, to and of course, it's a dawn of a new era for the boxing fraternity here in the country. As former vice chairman of the Ghana Boxing Authority, lawyer Peter Zuenis Jr. has been elected as the new GBA president. Lawyer Zuenis pulled 56 votes as against 35 for Henry Manley Spain and four for Francis Declan after immediate past boxing chairman Samir Captain pulled out 
at the ninth hour in today's Maiden GBA Congress held at the press center of the Accra Sports Stadium. Joy Sports caught up with excited, newly elected lawyer Peter Zuenis after his hard-fought victory. Hopeful of the outcome because of the interaction I've had with the stakeholders previously and because of the goodwill I enjoyed. So it didn't come as much of a surprise to me. I'm grateful to my good friend Mr. Manley Spain and Mr. Deckland for the healthy competition that we had. They are both very well-meaning gentlemen for professional boxing in this country. In the past, they've done so much as promoters and managers. And um, they are key elements in the administration and promotion of justice. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, they will have roles to play in this administration, irrespective of the fact that they are not part of the board. Right, so Reginald Nee Hansen Thompson emerged first vice president. The other positions saw the candidates being retained unopposed by virtue of being the sole contenders. Rabon Dodu was a judge second vice president, Frederick Gatte Treasurer, and the trial of Tofik Muntala, Dr. Samuel Quay, and Isaac Kweku Granson as executive members. A general secretary would be appointed by the National Sports Authority to assist the executive board. Meanwhile, some of the delegates who participated in the history-making event expressed optimism about the successful four-year term of the lawyer Zuenis led GVA administration. They spoke to Joy Sports. This man, we, we know that he's a very good man. We want him to come and he has come. And we know that he's going to deliver. He's the, he's the man that the people want. And we, we are all supporting him for the good things that he has for us. I know him from a long time. I'm a ring official, member of ring official. And I know the uh, dedication that he is, contribution that he has made. So I, 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 it's a matter of course that he has been voted for GBA as a, 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 a as GBA president for four years. I think I, I, he deserves it. Mm. He deserves. It. So the, the people have uh, expressed their, their views. So that, because the, uh, uh, so I have been the uh, vice chairman for uh, about two or, or three years as a GBA. So I think when it's really he deserves to win. Lawyer Zuenis happens to be a friend of mine as well. Uh, I think he's going to do a very good job. And we all are here to support him. Okay, so some quick updates from the UEFA Europa action that's ongoing right now. Chelsea are leading still Bucharest by one goal to nil. There's still a lot to do because of the first leg. It's 1-1, one, one, I'm just told right now. Uh, Bucharest have actually equalised. That means that Chelsea are in danger of not qualifying to the next stage of the competition. Inter Milan thrashed Tottenham Hotspur by four goals to one. Amazing scoring, really. That'll be all for sports tonight. My name is George Adder Jr. Do you have a good night? Sports was brought to you in association. or the conscious brethren, if you like, last night gathered at the La Beach for a concert dubbed Reggae on the Beach. The concert was aimed at raising funds to support underprivileged school children in the country through an initiative called Support the Needy Children Project, a grassroots NGO founded in 2006. Oh, if you haven't been to the beach at night before, this would sure have been a perfect experience for you. Patrons who gathered for the Reggae on the Beach concert had the best fun ever. <laughs> Apart from the music, they enjoyed the best nature has to offer. Cool breeze whilst dancing to tunes from reggae artists. The concert was a Rasta community's way of supporting the needy in society. Mama Africa coming to hear the Raswan. Why? So no matter where I go, let's sing. So if I have. The moment fans of gospel music have been waiting for is here. U.S. renowned singer William McDowell has arrived in Ghana. He arrived this morning ahead of his performance at a concert dubbed The Experience at the Accra International Conference Center. This is the first time William McDowell is coming to Ghana. Unlike many African Americans who visit the country, 
He has already fallen in love with Ghana. Well, obviously it's our homeland, and so we're excited about that. And I mean, just heard so many wonderful things about Ghana. I don't want to anger any of the other African nations, but everyone says that you're going to come to Africa for the first time. This is the place to come to. So we're excited about being here. So his longtime dream of wanting to come to Ghana because of the wonderful things he has heard about Ghana has finally come true. Not hiding his excitement, William tells fans what they should expect at Friday's concert. The overall experience of what it means for us to worship God together, uh, the thing that binds us together is a unity in Christ no matter where we are in the world. And so when we all come together, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I'm just excited to see what happens when we come together in Christ and worship together. The International Gospel Sensation says he will definitely take something back with him when the whole experience is over. William McDowell will be performing at the Experience Concert, an event seeking to raise funds to support maternal health related issues and HIV AIDS. So now we look at some comments coming in from the social media platform. Nana Safu Bawimia Ghana says Japan gives us 16 million and Ghana has 51 million to give to Wyoming and money to strengthen its electricity water and gas. What is the priority in the nation? Opinion Kwabna Entry Sapon said, very pathetic, as Japan approved $16 million whilst we still have the likes of Woyomi and co hoarding millions of dollars of Ghanaian money. Ghana is really sick. It needs urgent revolutionary care. And we'll take a final one, even though the messages are many, that the leaders of these liability companies, JWCL, ECG VRA should be fired and replaced, replaced by more competent and results-oriented people to manage these state institutions for us. So on that note, we end uh, the major news at 8. But before we go, like we always do, let's look again at the stories that made headlines today. Ghana Standards Authority defends its test, which suggested the expert alum used at the Wager Waterworks was still potent and did not pose a risk to the life of millions of Ghanaians. More support continues to pour in for the resolution of the Ghana's energy crisis as Japan approves a grant of $60 million for that purpose. Ghana likely to face imminent food crisis if investment in the agricultural sector is not improved. And on the international